the first part of the job for me is, is not being a biomechanist. It's not to build a relationship where I give information, but it's to build a trust relationship. They have to trust me, they have to know that I'm good in my job and I'm here to help them. Hi, my name is Mark Edipo. I'm a senior biomechanist here at AIS, specialized in swimming. The three main components of being a biomechanist. The first one is to set up, to, to run, to update the equipment that we have here around the swimming pool, like all the force plates, the cameras and everything. The second thing is um, how we work with the coaches, how we translate the data that we have measured, the biomechanic data, and how we translate them in, in a language that the coaches and the athletes are able to understand. And the third one is the research, and it's how we build new knowledge. How do you feel? Is it okay for you? You want to do another one? That's good? Okay, so you can swim down and come to the chair with us. I almost never worked before with uh, Paralympic athletes. And when I arrived here at AIS in Canberra, I really have to, to understand how I'm supposed to work and what kind of interaction I'm supposed to have with a Paralympic athlete compared to an able body athlete. First, I have to understand what kind of disability he has. When I analyze the data and I try to understand what's happening under the water or, or when he swims, I have to take into account that, that he has some specificity that an able body won't have. The second thing, I have to try, let's say, not to be shy, because at the beginning I was maybe a bit embarrassed to ask them if they were able to do something or if they have some issue with pushing with one leg or, or whatever that was involving their disabilities. And I have to work on myself to say, okay, it's, it's an able body, but different body. And I just have to understand what it can do and what it cannot do. And I have to take into account what it can do to make him better and to make him progress. Yeah, nice and boring. I was just born without any legs. Um, left side I've got below knee and right side I've got above knee. And I was, thankfully I learned to walk when everyone else learned to walk and I learned to swim about two or three years old because they thought it'd be great, kind of, I guess, therapy. Hi, I'm Jesse Ongles and I'm a Paralympian training at the Australian Institute of Sport. So starting at such an early age is both a blessing and a curse because um, while it's helped me a lot with my fitness and endurance and strength and feeling very naturally at home in the water, there's also a lot of bad habits that you pick up, especially in squads, just doing those laps over and over again. Uh, you get very ingrained in some things that aren't quite what you want to be doing at the elite level, so it becomes very difficult to change those very ingrained habits. Working with Jesse was quite challenging for me because it was the first time I was working with an athlete um, having no legs and that changed quite a lot of things in swimming, whether it's for the start, for the turn, or for the free swim. Biomechanics is how we apply the rules of physics to understand the human movements, but we cannot apply them directly the same way for, for an athlete like Jesse, because the way his body will be balanced, the way he's going to move in the water will be completely different than what an able body will do. We have the difference that I'm missing my legs, so I guess I provide him a bit of extra challenge, which is kind of fun. But generally, we try and do things the conventional way, because obviously that's going to be much easier, that's tried and tested. And if that doesn't work, then it's really, it's good fun to try and experiment and find out what's best for someone with a disability like me. So kind of paving new ground, which is good fun. What the technology can help to do is really to put numbers on the series, on the impression we have, and to have a more accurate idea to have some real clues about what's happening and not only an impression to be sure that what we say is really what's happening. Basically if we take the wet plate system that we use quite often here to measure the, the dive and the, and, the, and the turns, we can have, I won't say hundreds of numbers, but quite a lot of numbers. And the job of the biomechanics is to be able to pick up just the most important one specifically for that athletes, to have enough background to understand those information, those numbers, and to be able to translate them to the coach and to the athlete to make them meaningful. Take your mark. The last session that I did, we were working on how moving the block, uh, we could see that the, re uh, the force vertically versus horizontally, if I was to move it just slightly forwards, then I would get my arms out faster, which is a connection that you would never make without that technology and that data supporting that. When Jesse dives, um, it's not supposed to be as deep 
as another swimmer. Usually we advise the, the, the able-bodied swimmer to be around one meter deep in the water, but because Jesse won't be able to do some dolphin kick during his glide and during his underwater phase of the start, we're gonna have to change that. We're gonna find a way out, we adapt the sport to make it good for Jesse. And that's, that was quite challenging to understand how we adapt the, the rules we have, the information we have for, for able bodies to, to what Jesse can do. The large majority of things that we're trying to improve are to swim more uh, like what you'd see at the Olympics in the Paralympics. So trying to overcome your disability. Um, and sometimes that does take modifying that technique, but sometimes it's just finding a different path to the same technique. So yeah, I think it's been a huge benefit that he's worked with both Olympic and Paralympic teams. But as I said, for me, it's very important to have a human being relationship between, between the athlete, the coach, and the biomechanics. It's not like only to provide information, but it's also to say that I'm here for you, you can trust me, and I'm here to help you. And tomorrow, it will be your medal, but I, I want to be here to help you to get that medal.